So, hi everybody, can you hear me? So, my name is Volker Simonis, I'm working for SAP in the SAP JVM team. Probably even fewer people know that SAP has its own Java VM as well, just like IBM. But uh, we are also working in the OpenJDK, so we have contributed the PowerPC and S390 port to the OpenJDK. I'm the project lead of these two ports in the OpenJDK. And uh, yeah, today I will uh, tell you a story about uh, some optimization techniques in Hotspot and how uh, they can lead to uh, surprising uh, results if uh, you don't get the optimization right. So these are just some corner cases, but anyway, uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, errors, and uh, I will show you how we fix them. So this is the outline of the talk. I will uh, tell you some words about escape analysis, which is a common optimization technique in virtual machines, and then some words about intrinsics, which is another optimization technique. Then I will uh, shortly introduce system array copy, which probably everybody of you knows, and its specification. And I will show how too much of the before mentioned optimizations can break the specification request requirements for array copy. And then I will show you how we fix the bug. So, uh, what about escape analysis? Um, escape analysis, it's uh, it's switched on by default in Hotspot, so if you run your Java program, you will get escape analysis. It detects the escape state of local variables, so it can detect if they escape your function. If they uh, arc escape, it, it means if they just uh, get passed to uh, uh, functions you call, or if they globally escape. For example, if you assign the value of these objects to, to globally, to static or globally visible objects. And the uh, results of the escape analysis is uh, used, for example, to optimize uh, logs, uh, compares, or uh, to eliminate allocations altogether, which is also called scalar replacement. The escape analysis is, of course, uh, heavily dependent on, on inlining. So the more you can inline into your method, the more effective uh, escape analysis works. But it also can uh, analyze uh, methods which aren't inlined with the so-called bytecode uh, analyzer. But again, that's restricted to uh, a, a certain number of bytecodes and uh, call depths. Escape analysis in Hotspot is based on this paper which I show here, Escape Analysis for Java. You can download it from the internet if you're interested in the details. And it's implemented in these two uh, OptiScape CPP and uh, Compiler interface, bytecode, escape analyzer, CPP in the in the Hotspot source code. If you're interested in the implementation details, so uh, I will show a, a, sh a short example how this works. So take uh, this program. Uh, we have a method called scalar replace, which takes an int argument. It then allocates a new integer array uh, with this, which has three times this int value, and we call a dot function, which pro uh, computes the dot product of these two vectors. So uh, if, you, if you run this uh, with, a, with a Java VM, uh, and we, we only want to compile uh, our, our uh, scalar replace function, so we don't want to have any inlining, we uh, get uh, something like this. So this is the assembler code produced by the C2 uh, just-in-time compiler. So actually it does some argument shuffling. It uh, loads three in the argument register one, uh, the class information, so integer array in the argument register, register two, and then it calls new uh, Java array. So this is the allocation of the array. It then fills <coughs> the array with uh, uh, our first argument. So remember, RBP holds uh, the first argument, that was the, the x value we, uh, with which we called the scalar replace function. And uh, then it loads uh, the, the array again into argument one and two registers and calls the dot function. So because we didn't allow inlining, there's nothing more uh, the JIT compiler can do. So uh, if uh, we allow a compilation of uh, scalar replace and dot, 
and disable escape analysis. We have to do this because by default it's on. So I want to show you how this would look uh, when it's uh, switched off. Again, the first part is exactly the same. We allocate a new array. Uh, we uh, fill the array with the value. And then because uh, we have inlined the dot function, all the computation is done uh, in place. So we multiply the input value, and then we add it three times to array x. And array x, incidentally, is also the return register. So that's basically it. So of course, through inlining, the method gets faster because we saved uh, one method call. So now we enable escape analysis and eliminate allocations, which is, uh, as I told you before, actually enabled by default. I just uh, put these uh, options here to emphasize that fact. And uh, the resulting code looks like this. So this, of course, is, again, much better. It's just the computations. There is no more allocation and uh, no more calls. Because escape analysis has detected that uh, our array, I just go back to the source code. So this array is not escaping the scalar replace uh, function, right? We just need it here locally to do the computation of the dot product, and then we only return the result of that computation. So actually, this array isn't really needed. All we need is uh, the, the array values. So the C2 compiler can detect that by escape analysis, and it, uh, <coughs> it uh, eliminates the allocation, and we remain just with the computation. So uh, there are, in, if you use a debugging version of the hotspot, you can use uh, this uh, print escape analysis and print eliminate allocation flags to give you more details about how escape analysis works. And if you run that, uh, you get the information, escape analysis. It builds a so-called connection graph. Uh, and uh, the interesting thing is this one. So the, the compiler detected the, the, the new instruction in your Java code was actually uh, transformed into an allocate array node in the JIT compiler graph. And the optimizer, the, gra the escape analyzer had detected that this array is not escaping the function. And then it uh, uh, detects that it can be scalarly replaced. And then it say eliminated allocate array. OK, so that's uh, uh, how escape analysis works, briefly. So now let's come uh, to intrinsics. So intrinsics are a very old uh, means of optimizing functions. They are available in basically every programming language, and they can be used uh, for optimization, but also for implementing uh, features which are not uh, directly accessible from, from your language. So for example, C. In C, uh, typically, the, the memcopy functions are intrinsified. Or, or for example, in, in, your C, in new, new CPU architecture support, for example, transactional memory. But there is no uh, notion of transactional memory in C. Nevertheless, you can get uh, use these uh, functions by, by so-called compiler intrinsics. And they are also available in Java, of course. So there are actually quite a lot of hotspot intrinsics. Uh, more than 260 when I counted last time. Uh, and there are different levels of intrinsics. Uh, if you're interested in this topic, there is another talk I gave. Uh, and you can find uh, the recordings. Uh, I gave them, I think, at JokerConf. And you can find the recordings on YouTube. I don't want to go into uh, the details here. I will just give you some examples how it works. So when you, for example, look at the system array copy uh, function, which is Java Lang system array copy, if you look at the source code in uh, system.java, you will see that array copy is defined as follows. So this is the array copy function you need, uh, you, you know, all know, and it has this annotation. This is new in Java 9, hotspot intrinsic candidate. So this means that the uh, hotspot may intrinsify this method. By the way, it's native. It's native since, uh, I think, since the very beginning of Java. I just checked uh, with Java 1.1. It was the oldest version I could. Uh, download uh, and it was native from the beginning, I think. Probably because in the very beginning, uh, the developers thought that it was uh, doing this in native code. I think today 
could just as well be done in Java because the JIT compilers uh, got much better. But nevertheless, way it's still maybe interesting to intrinsify this, and we will see uh, why. And the implementation of this native function, it's a, 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 a usual a JNI function. It takes the JNI environment, J object. It takes the objects as J object, J objects. And of course, calling a JNI, fu JNI function has a certain overhead. So this is the implementation. It, it just uh, does some basic checks if the arguments are zero and throws null pointer exception, and otherwise calls the copy implementation of one of the classes. So let's uh, see an example. Let's say we have this array copy function, uh, which we've defined ourselves. It takes an uh, integer array as source and another integer array as destination. And then we just call system array copy from source to destination. From the source array, we will start at index 0 and copy to destination array at index 0, and we will copy eight elements. So when we disable intrinsics, with this XX options, you can uh, disable intrinsics in a hotspot. Again, they are uh, on by, by, by default. So if I want to show you the difference, I have to switch it off. Uh, <coughs> we will see uh, the machine code which gets generated. And again, there is just some argument shuffling here because uh, our function gets uh, the arrays in different places then are needed later on for calling system array copies. So we just shuffle the arguments around, uh, enter 0 and 8 for the specific uh, arguments of array copy, and then we do a, a, a call, a static call to Java lang system array copy. And this will end up in a JNI call uh, in later on. So uh, now let's see if we what happens when we use intrinsics. So uh, the generated code looks a little, more, a little bit more complicated, but actually, it's, uh, it's much better because you can see we have no call here. We do a lot of checks here. We load the lengths. So RSI is the register which holds the, the first argument. So it's a source array. And at index 16 of the source array, there is the length. That's uh, the place where the length of the array is stored. We load that into R10. And we compare R10 against 8. So we want to see does the source array contain at least eight elements. We have to check that because otherwise the copy wouldn't work. And system array copy is required to throw an exception in that case. We will see the specification of system array copy in a second. So uh, this, uh, the loading of the length field from the, er from the array element is also an implicit null check. Uh, again, I've covered this uh, in one of my other talks, which you can uh, see at, uh, at YouTube if you're interested how uh, implicit null checks are implemented and are working in hotspot. So if, uh, incidentally, this array should be 0, we will get a um, segmentation fault here. But that's no problem, because hotspot has its own signal handler. It will catch the signal handler, and it will transform it in the corresponding Java uh, null pointer exception, which is required by array copy. So again, we do, we do some of the checks here, if all the arguments are, are correct, and then Starting here with this line, we just load the first element. The first element is at index 24 of RSI, load into R10, and we save it into RDX, which is the second argument at the same index. And we do this eight times until index 52, which is the seventh element. So actually, we've inlined the whole uh, array copy into this function. We don't need any more call. and. Uh, that could be done even more uh, uh, optimizations. For example, we could use vector instructions or even more fancy stuff. But that's actually how uh, the, the usage of uh, intrinsics has uh, optimized system array copy. OK, so now to system array copy specification. Uh, it says uh, something like the following. Uh, if one of the following uh, conditions is true, an index out of bound exception is thrown. So if the length argument is negative, system error copy has to throw an index out of bound exceptions. So that's very easy to understand. So now let's look at the following test. <coughs> we have an array copy for function, which takes the source uh, integer array and the length. And we will call system error copy 
and copy from this source array from index three into a newly created uh, integer array with eight elements at index five, and we will copy uh, length elements. If uh, this copy succeeds, we just return false. If for some reason we will get an index out of bound exceptions, for example, if this length is too small or too big, we will return true. And now we will call our array copy four functions from the main method. We just call it in a loop in order to just in time compile it. And we call array copy with a source array, which is 128 integers long, and we copy minus one elements. So obviously, if length is minus one, and we look at the specification, if the length argument is negative, this should always return true, right? Because every array copy should just throw an index out of bound exception. And if for some reason we sh should get false, th th that's obviously an error, an error in system error copy, right? So in this case, we print the error, and, uh, and that's it. So if you run this uh, with Java, it runs for a while, and then we indeed get an error at iteration 5,376 index area out of bounds exception expected, but we didn't get one. So why did this happen? Strange, right? And at this index. So maybe you know that uh, this uh, could be uh, related uh, to escape analysis because otherwise they wouldn't have told you about it <laughs> at the beginning of the talk. So. Now we, we, we can use these options, which I revealed before, print escape analysis and print eliminate allocations. And indeed, we see before the error happens, uh, we, uh, the, the just-in-time compiler eliminated an allocation. And when we go back to the example, we see that here in our error copy uh, function, we allocate this, uh, this integer array, but it does, this error doesn't escape. So actually, uh, the JIT compiler can eliminate it, right? Because uh, we don't need it. So, uh, and this also ex explains a little bit this strange index number because uh, Hotspot uh, has something called tiered compilation. So first it runs in interpreted mode. Then after a method gets hot, it gets compiled with the tier one, so-called C1 compiler. And uh, after that method gets hot again, it gets compiled with C2. And escape analysis is only supported in the C2 server compiler. So that's why we get this uh, error only in the 5000th iteration, because obviously the interpreter and the C1 compiler, they uh, run our program correctly and always return the index in our index out of bound exception. So we could now try to disable the error copy intrinsics and run the example again. And wonder, wonder, it works. So if we, eliminate, uh, if we disable eliminate allocation, again, the example will succeed. So this has to do, the, the error must be related to escape analysis and uh, intrinsics. <coughs> so let's see uh, what codes get generated. Uh, again, we see that uh, we have some checks here, but uh, the generated code doesn't contain uh, any check uh, for length being zero. It checks that source length is smaller than source position plus length, and it checks that the, the source argument isn't zero and all kind of stuff, but it doesn't check for zero, for length being smaller than zero. So that's obviously an error. So this is the most complicated slide of this talk. This is how the compiler works uh, in, a, in, in Hotspot. So the, 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 the C2 compiler, it starts to parse the bytecode of your method, and then it uh, parses the blocks, and it parses the calls, and when it sees system, the call to system array copy, it checks for every function, it checks if it can be intrinsified. So uh, if system array copy, we saw it can be intrinsified, it tries to inline it, and it inlines uh, array copy, and instead of uh, creating a call node, it uh, creates uh, uh, an array copy node, which will be later on replaced uh, directly by, by machine instructions. At the later stage, in the so-called optimization stage, we run uh, the escape analyzer, and uh, the escape analyzer uh, um, recognizes that it's possible to eliminate an allocation, 
it eliminates it, and it also eliminates eliminate allocate nodes. Yeah, it, it eliminates the allocation node, and even later on, it processes the user of these allocation nodes. Because obviously, when we eliminate allocations, all the users of the of the allocation can be eliminated as well. And uh, then, in the final stage, we will generate code for all the nodes. So, generate array copy. Uh, we'll, gen we'll replace the array copy node by, by machine code. <coughs> so here is uh, the inline array copy. This is where the call to array copy is uh, replaced by the array copy node. And it has a, this is from the actual hotspot source code. It has a very nice uh, documentation which say the following test must be performed. Because obviously when we replace the call, we still have to adhere to the specification. So and pi, uh, point five is, uh, this, uh, no, point six is the length must not be negative. But then later on in the code, we generate all the, all the checks, but six is missing. <laughs> Strange, right? So it's actually not that bad as you may think. Because, uh, well, the, 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 uh, here in generate array copy, that's where actually the code is generated, we have six. So length must not be negative. We generate the, the code here. But when we used escape analysis before and we process the users of the eliminated allocation, we just eliminate the whole array copy node because it's not used, right? It, it just wants to copy data to, to some memory which is not used. So the whole array copy node is eliminated and we don't even generate code for it. So we don't have this check anymore. So that's actually the error. So. Uh, just to repeat, when we uh, when we eliminate the, the we here we create the array copy node, here we eliminate it, and here we want to uh, create the last check which was missing here. So obviously, intrinsic intrin intrinsification is a very old uh, optimization technique, and it's in hotspot since long time. Later on, uh, escape analysis was added, and. Uh, it just didn't uh, take into uh, consideration this, this combination. And actually, this code is used for more, also for, for other parts for, to, to generate a copy, also for object clone and things like that. So that's probably why, at one point in time, it was, <coughs> it was a benefit to move this check to this later stage. So the fix is actually easy. Naively, we would just add it here. But then it may happen that we have two times the check. We have it one time here, and if you don't eliminate the array copy, we have the same check a second time here. So uh, we did it a little bit more smarter. We uh, extended the array copy node and added a flag to say uh, we, we add this uh, check for length or not. And when we generate code, we just ask is the check already been generated or not. And we only generate it if needed. So this was that. Uh, I think I'm running out of time. Uh, the funny thing I just want to mention is when I was fixing this bug, uh, I, I, I did wrote, uh, like every good program, I did wrote some regression tests. And incidentally, I found another bug in the C1 compiler <laughs> for this specification here. So if the, sort if the source argument refers to an area of primitive component type, and the dest error refers to an area of reference component type, we should throw an uh, array store exception, right? So I just throw this very fast. This is a variation of the array copy. For example, here we don't take an int array as source, but just an object. And we cop again copy source to object with length. And when we call this with an int array, obviously it's not possible to copy integers to objects. And usually this, this check works. But if you call this with zero, zero length, there is a shortcut in uh, the generation of this uh, array copy node, which say, okay, if it's the length is zero, I don't have to do this, all this, this, this fancy checks anymore. So and it's th the same example, if you run it, we will get an array store exception uh, at, at, at already in iteration 256, because this is already in a C1 generated code, which happens much faster. <coughs> if you run it in interpreted mode, no error happens. If you switch off the compilation, so only the C2 compiler will run. Again, we get 
we get no uh, no error. So this way you can you can uh, find out if errors are related to interpreter, C1 compiler, C2 compiler. So this is here the code where this check is generated. So check if negative. We check here if uh, if the length. We do a check for length. If the length is uh, less than zero, we jump to an error uh, stop. Otherwise, if the length is zero, we just go to continuation, which is at the end, before we even call the array copy routine. And this check here, check for the element types, is just uh, shortcut it away, and that's where the error happens. So the fix, this was the bug. It was fixed in uh, November. And all the slides and uh, code is on GitHub. If you want, you can have a look at it. So thank you a lot.